So welcome everybody to the product uh, update for the month of May 2020. So the things that we wanted to start with would be to show you a couple of things that we have released or been working on lately that you may have missed or that are new to Pressbooks. And I want to start with some of the smaller features and then we'll talk a little bit more about the big projects that are ongoing. The first thing that I wanted to share was a bug or an issue that we had noticed that has been fixed and has now been deployed to all Pressbooks networks in the latest release. So previously, when you made um, these various different colored text boxes, you can insert them in your text. So you could have a learning objectives or a key takeaways or an exercises or an examples text box. If you were to just make a standard text box, let's say I made a key takeaways text box, what would happen by default is there would be some heading text in just a regular paragraph, but you could, if you wanted to, change it to be heading, like a heading two or heading three or heading four element. And previously, those elements just accepted the color of the heading element rather than the text box header value. So what's changed is now if you go into theme options for a book, you'll see in your web book, you have the ability to change the header color. This is the text color for the header for each one of these different text boxes. And previously, it would change the default value, but if you had changed it to a heading, this rule wasn't catching the headings. And so they were just, sometimes it would be like a blue heading on a blue background and it was nearly illegible and it was causing accessibility problems. Now, when you change this heading color, it will be applied to the text value, even if it's a heading, as well as if it's a paragraph. So for example, just to show you, I'm gonna make this like a, you know, a gray for exercises and we'll notice a very subtle difference here. If we come back to that chapter that I was just in, you'll notice that exercises is now a very faint gray rather than a white, and examples is now a red on a white background, for example. So those are some customization tools that you have. They were there previously for regular text, but now they work for headings as well. It's not a huge deal, but it, it makes a difference if you're using heading elements inside of text boxes. The next thing that we did and we fixed was we added support for three additional scripts or alphabets. So in Pressbooks, there is a way that you can declare support for non-Latin alphabets. Many people use alphabets or language systems that use different character sets. And so typically to add support for them, you would come into the theme options and you would see which fonts that you wanted to add support for. This is important both to allow you to display those typefaces properly and those languages properly in the web book and also to make sure that the characters needed are included when you make an ebook or a PDF export. So in this case, we added three. Um, one of them uh, is called Adlam, which is a script or language used in Guinea and uh, Senegambian languages. Another is called Nako, which is also a West African language alphabet. And the third is Armenian, which is used by people in Armenia. So if I added support for those three languages and I saved the changes here, what you'll notice is if I come back to the book, you can see in this book, here's some script testing. Here's the text. This is the, I think the UN Declaration of Human Rights being represented in Adlam, which is a right to left language, Nako, which is also a right to left language, and Armenian, which is a left to right language. And if you wanted to, you could then come to the export menu and we'll say, let's make a EPUB and a PDF export. Without this feature, oftentimes what will happen is the, the, the missing characters will just display as those little rectangle blocks that look like tofu. And so we wanted to make that so it doesn't happen. And you'll notice in this book now, here you're seeing Adlam being represented as the character set you'd expect, and Ko is the same, and Armenian. So those are three additional languages. If you are working in those languages or you know people who would like to represent knowledge in any one of those languages, that's now possible in Pressbooks. We support a lot of text typefaces and languages and if there are others that you feel should be represented and are missing, let us know and we'd be happy to add them. Um, another thing that happened is uh, in Pressbooks, we have a feature, we call it Shape Shifter and it's available with the Malala theme. So if you apply the Malala theme to one of your books, it's available here from the theme options, Malala is a really versatile textbook theme that we designed recently. When you come into theme options, we have this shape shift, shape shifter value, which means that in the web book, you can set custom typefaces for both headers and body elements. You can set them separately in the PDF and yet again separately in the ebook. So you could use a whole different set of typefaces for print 
that you use for the ebook, that you use for the webbook. And this was already possible, but there were some users that wanted to be able to use Source Sans Pro, an open font in the Google Fonts library. It was very important for them. Their ebook needed to have Source Sans Pro. And so we added Source Sans Pro to the list of available typefaces. Um, and to use it, let's say, in this PDF, I would say, let's set the header font to be, I don't know, Noto, or the body font to be Noto Serif, and the header font will be Source Sans Pro. And then I'll save that change. And then I'll export the book and I'll make the PDF. And when you view the PDF, okay. So here you'll notice this book, this typeface is Source Sans Pro, and this typeface is Noto Sans. So I just customized the PDF. The next change is actually a feature that someone on this call requested. Thank you, Cheryl. So Cheryl said, hey, you know, uh, a lot of times uh, libraries or other publishing organizations. Uh, are on Instagram because that's where the kids at are at these days. They're all on the gram. So we want to be able to have an Instagram link on our network landing page that points to an Instagram account that the library or the publishing program may run. So previously you could add a Facebook link that would look like this. You could have a Twitter link that looks like this. And now you can add an Instagram link. So that's available just to show you how to get there. If you're at your network route and you click on your dashboard, you come to appearance and customize you'll see a bunch of customizer choices and one of them here now is a social media link that points to an Instagram page. So in this case, on this network, I don't use Instagram, uh, I, but my sister does. She has a flower farm in Washington and so this points to her flower farm. <laughs> so that's an Instagram feature. Thanks Cheryl for the idea and that was really fun for us to build an ad. Uh, the next thing is also something that was suggested by someone on this call, Jim Paradiso. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Jim noticed that the book source attribution statement had a couple of stray values. If the publisher was missing, so in this case, this book is a clone version of American government published using press books. There used to be a stray by here, the word by, and it was a space for the publisher. But if the publisher was missing, there was just a weird grammatical phrase, published using press books by under, which didn't make any sense. So now if there's no publisher, there's no stray by there. If there is a publisher, it looks like this. This book is a clone version of this book by Aperva. Thank you, Aperva, great book. Yeah. Published using press books by name of publisher under the license. So it's a small change, but it makes a difference if you're trying to read a grammatically correct attribution statement. Did anybody have questions about anything they just saw or anything they'd like to ask in the chat for me to take a deeper dive into? Hey, Steele, yeah. I've got a question on the Instagram links. Yes. Are those set at the network level uh, so that's one Instagram link for your entire catalog, or is it available for the author of a book to set individually? Yeah, that's a, that's available at the network level. So the network can have a set of social media links for the Pressbooks network itself. Um, we don't we don't use the uh, we don't have a social media integration at the book level, though you can tweet about a book by clicking the tweet this thing link. So that would those would be network level. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing that I want to show everyone is uh, I give an update on what we've been doing with uh, the LTI update. So uh, some of you were here in a call previously. So the, the basic idea is that we're setting up Pressbooks to be able to communicate with your learning management system. So you could take Pressbooks content, you can embed it in the LMS, and you can exchange great information using the LTI Advantage or the LTI 1.3 specification. And so I want to give a quick demo of how you might do that in a live Pressbooks book using the Canvas learning management system. We've been testing this with LMSs, and so far we've tested it with the five largest LMSs, and it works similarly in all of them. But for demo purposes today, I'll be using Canvas. If you want more details about how it looks in, say, Blackboard or D2L or Sakai or Moodle, we can provide that on request. So here, this is a sample chapter in a Pressbooks book. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say paragraph one, and then I'm going to insert an H5P activity. So I'll do a simple fill in the blanks activity, and I'll say paragraph two, and I'll make another H5P activity. It'll be a true false question. And then I have paragraph three. So these are activities I've already made. And so I've inserted three activities into this chapter. I'm going to save this chapter, and I'll say, okay, there's three gradable activities in this chapter. When the LTI plugin is turned on below that, there'll be a space for the instructor to configure this activity as a graded activity. 
And so I'd like to actually uh, do some grade reporting in aggregate for three different activities. So my comma key was sticky. <laughs> so I've added three different activities. So these three activities have been added to this chapter as a, an aggregate activity. And it tells me it recognized, okay, activity eight, this one had a title, it was called language pluralization activity. It's a fill in the blanks activity and it's worth a total of six points. You can get up to six points for doing this activity. The next one's a multiple choice question, it's worth one point, and the next is a true false question, it's also worth one point. So in total, this should be an activity that students could get score out of eight on. And as the instructor, I can then say, okay, when do I want this to be graded? So I can set a beginning date and an end date, and only attempts within that time period will be included for the grade. If I leave it blank, there is no limit. All attempts will be considered gradable. And then I can choose a grading scheme. So here what I'm going to start with is I'm going to say first attempt. My first attempt will be the one that gets the grade in the grade book. So I can do it as many times as I want, but the one that goes to the grade book is the first attempt. So now that I've configured this activity, I'm going to save this here. So I have saved a configurable activity. What I'm going to demonstrate here in, in, in Canvas is how to create the activity um, manually in the, in the LMS. So here what I would do is I would create a new activity. I would select external tool. We've already configured Pressbooks to be an LTI tool here. And then I need to paste the actual launch number for this activity. I happen to know it. But in the future, you, if you needed to, you would just be able to paste it from the configuration value. And I'll call this demo graded activity. And I've added it to my course. Now, I can pretend that I'm a student. If I were a student, the view would be a little bit different. I'd have to publish the activity. But I'm logged in as an instructor and student, so this ought to work. The student would launch the activity in the LMS, and they would see my Pressbooks chapter that has these three activities in them. And so I'm going to practice, and I will take this activity, and I'm going to try to get these ones right, and I'm going to get a lot of them wrong. So I'll check. Okay, I got four out of six on the first one. This true-false question, let's say it's false. I got that one right. Which answers are correct? Well, it tells me these three, so okay. So on this, I scored six out of eight on this, my first attempt. If I go to grades, you'll see, hopefully, whoops, I didn't configure my assignment properly. So I did something wrong where I didn't configure my assignment. Let's go back to, live demos are always a joy. Let's go back to a different activity that I already did configure properly, <laughs> um, which was my Nidaker activity. This is an activity that I've set up in Pressbooks that has a bunch of learning activities, and I did the same way, except that I did it right before this activity. So here I'm going to take this activity. This one is set to be my, uh, an average of all possible scores. So you'll notice right now I have a grade value. Oh, hold on a second. I have a grade value for this activity of 75. Um, and in Pressbooks itself, it's set up to be the average attempt. So I'm going to really bomb this activity, and we should see my score drop from a 75 to a little bit lower. OK, I did that one wrong. Got that one wrong. Got that one wrong. I got a couple points, so it wasn't a total bomb. Got that one wrong. And I got that one right. OK. So I did OK. And then there's a question at the bottom. I got that one wrong. So now when I come into my grades, rather than it being a 75, my grade has just dropped to 62.5. It's averaging all of the attempts that I've made according to the rules that I've set. And so what we're seeing here basically is that Pressbooks is acting as an aggregator of learning activities, and it can display them on a kind of chapter by chapter basis according to fairly complex rules and fairly complex settings. If I were to come back into the book here, um, and let's say I were editing this chapter, and I removed this very first H5P activity. Okay, I've, I've removed the activity from the chapter, and you'll notice down below, the grading tells me one or more activities has been removed because it can't be found in the chapter editor. It's kind of unfair to assess your students on activities that aren't actually in the chapter 
that you're assessing them on. So we will automatically validate and remove activities if they get taken out of the chapter. So for example, I could go back and add this, this activity back in by adding an H5P. I don't remember which one it was. I think it was 41. Once I save that chapter, I can come down and I can restore activity 41 to the graded activity. Or I could just manually remove it. I could say, you know what, this activity is just for practice. I don't actually want to record their grade on H5P activity number 41. Let's remove it from the grade value. And now when I save this, students will only be graded on the question set and the multiple choice, and they won't actually be graded on the other activity, which was just for practice. So the idea here is we want to give the instructors and learners maximum flexibility to set up the assessment in a way that makes most sense for their context. Most of the time, we think this is probably best to be used as formative assessment, but there are some cases, obviously, where you might want to do this for slightly higher stakes. So I'm going to pause there. I think Jim raised his hand, has a question. I just had a quick one on the, if you were to remove that H5P activity, would it refresh or uh, the grade book? Because let's say you're midstream, you're like, oh, this one is been very tough on students. I'm just going to remove it really quick. Will it refresh the, the averages, so to speak, in the grade book? Or would they have to actually, uh, what would happen in that regard? Do you know? Yeah, so, so what will happen is the grade has already been reported to the learning management system. And in order for that grade report to be updated, they would need to, generally what would happen with the learner would need to make a new attempt. And then we can send them, because the LMS and the, the tool have to communicate. So the, if a learner made a new attempt, we would faithfully report whatever the grade value was based on that new attempt or that new value. So it's generally not a great idea to change your grading scheme after learners have already yeah. started taking an activity. But, but if, for example, you were doing average score uh, or last score or uh, best score, those are three of the options. Each of those would be updated each time a learner made an attempt based on whatever conditions you as the instructor had set. So. No, so, perfect. Yeah, this is clearly a hypothetical. Hopefully no one would do that. Just curious if someone were to do that, what we could expect. So. Yeah, you would just, the, the score, the, the, the grade value will only be communicated when a new attempt is made. So whenever a new attempt has been made, we'll, it'll check and say, does this, should this override the existing score? Yes or no? And if so, then it will. Um, so Anita, yeah, so Canvas, so let me clarify that a little bit. I, so each of the LMSs do support the import of thin common cartridges with LTI links. The problem right now with most LMSs is they assume that the LTI tool will be an LTI 1.1 tool. And so they look and say, is there an existing LTI 1.1 tool? Do I have a key secret pair? Well, in this case, no, we have an LTI 1.3 tool and it uses a different authentication method. And so the LMS sees an LTI link and assumes it's using LTI 1.1 and then can't find a 1.1 tool and says, sorry, you don't have a valid configuration. What the LMS needs to do is to say, oh, there's an LTI link. Is there an LTI 1 tool? No. Is there an LTI 1.3 tool? Yes. Use LTI 1.3. Blackboard does that right now, but the other LMSs haven't yet figured that out. And so the, the thin common cartridge links will work, but only if you're using LTI 1.1 in those platforms. We expect that they'll fix that because that's a pretty important piece of compliance with how people expect thin common cartridges and LTI to work, but we're kind of waiting on the uh, LMS providers right now. So the way that it would work currently, Anita, would be much the same way that most other LTI tools work. You'd either manually create the external link kind of through the method that I showed there, or you could do something called deep linking, which is you connect a book and then you pick the activity and add it that way. Um, both of those are ways to add L LMS or LTI activities to a course. We just think it's much more convenient and faster to add a whole book at once because that certainly saves you a lot of configuration time. But right now the LMSs are a bit behind on the supporting the, the uh, thin common cartridge. Um, JR asked, is the connection of Pressbooks LTI to the LMS something that network admins within an institution are able to do? Or does Pressbooks have to enable for each institution's network individually? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, but JR, let me show you kind of how the connection works. So um, I'm going to share my screen here and I'll zoom back out. So, okay, so here I'm logged in as a network manager. You'll notice there will be at the network level 
a tab called integrations and you will see the ability to create as many LTI consumers as you would like. So typically you would create one LTI consumer for each of the platforms that are connected to your network. A platform in this case would be an LMS. In most cases, there is a single Pressbooks network used by one institution and that institution probably has one LMS, though there are cases where you have more. You would probably make a new LTI consumer for each LMS that you use. You can see that we're testing with a bunch of different LMSs on one network now, but you, what you do is you click add new and here your LMS will provide a bunch of information from the platform. So we have a, a kind of a KB doc or a walkthrough doc that shows you in Canvas, where do you get this information? And you get it from Canvas and you paste it in. In Moodle, where do you get this information? In Sakai, where do you get it? So you get the information that you need from your learning management system and you paste it in here. And then there's a bunch of information that you need from Pressbooks that you give to the learning management system. And that usually gets established at the, the LMS institutional level. So when that happens, Pressbooks is a trusted LTI tool. Your Pressbooks network is a trusted LTI tool for your whole installation of the learning management system. And then it's, it's a configuration that happens once, usually by a Pressbook network manager and your LMS admin, and you can handle it from there. And then there's a KID, and then you have a bunch of defaults. So default values for various settings that you can, so you can control these settings and then these settings are also available to be overridden at a book level. The settings control things like, should you be able to set the user's role when they first launch the LTI link and what do you want them to be? So for example, in this case, I want students to write a book collaboratively. So when I, they launch the LTI link, I want to make them editors in the book and I could set that setting. Or I could choose which common cartridge version to use, et cetera. The other thing to note about the LTI product here, this is a paid add-on for Pressbooks, so this, the LTI integration wouldn't be included, but it could be included for a, like, as a paid add-on um, to establish connections for grading and grade passback. I think there was also a question in the chat earlier about how do people uh, notify users that Google Analytics has been activated on the site. Kathy, are you willing to kind of elaborate on that one and I can take a better crack at it? Yeah, I am. So um, we've activated Google Analytics across our Pressbooks site. How do we how do we tell people that are on the site that they're being tracked? I think Kathy, probably what I would do is if you'd like to let users know that their page visits are being tracked through Google Analytics, mm -hmm. I would probably configure your network homepage to say something about that. So when okay. you your Pressbooks your Pressbooks visit your root website. So for example, let me just share the screen here. You have the ability to make this landing page say whatever you want. You could right. put a little, you could put some kind of notice or some kind of information either in the main body or if you want, there's a little footer area that's a nice place to put notifications and things like that. So I'd probably decide where you think it's best or most appropriate and notify people there that okay. uh, you're using Google Analytics. Ideas, that might be a really good question actually for the EDU community of practice because I don't know what other people's practices are at other schools. And, and still, um, it's the case that you could put a full TOS terms of service for readers as a separate page that could be linked in that footer as well if, if your institution wanted to do that. That's a great point. And Kathy, there's a pretty good thread on the EDU community practice okay. where Lauren Ray and others have been talking about their terms of service policies and what they put up. I bet that would be a great question for that. Okay. Okay, I'll put it in there. We have a great privacy statement. We just haven't figured out how to make it obvious on the book level. So that when the students come to it, you know, they, they see it right off the bat. So great. Thank you, friends. Yeah. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, does anyone else have questions about LTI or where we're at and what we're working on there? Yes, yeah, still, this is Chelsea. I have a question. Sure. Um, you did a great job at seeing how, like, within that chapter, you had three activities and you were aggregating them to send back a grade. Is it possible to send back the grades individually on each activity? So uh, the answer is yes, it's possible within the LTI specification. So LTI Advantage supports something called line item. Uh, so, so in that case, what, what would happen would be you would send an aggregate score and then you could also send the, the LMS information about how that aggregate score was calculated. So each of the individual activities. We would like to build and develop that and add support for that. We haven't done it yet. So that's something we'll be working on maybe in the next month. But I believe that it's possible. We just haven't implemented it yet.
Okay, and then with the point values and the assignment dates, when that gets configured over on the Canvas side, they're right. also able to add, kind of override those values that come in, right? And I guess if, if you set a date on the Prespec side, presumably that, you know, kind of creates <laughs> limit of, you could only go narrower on the Canvas side, not wider. But like for point values, if it comes over from Pressbooks as a point value of eight, a professor could choose to make that assignment worth 50 points. And I assume it would just auto calculate, you know, based on the percentages. Yeah, so that's a really good question, and this is a little bit complicated, so I'll try to unpack it. What you're saying here is that if I made an assignment here in the Canvas course, so these are assignments created through Pressbooks. So for example, if I edit this assignment, I could put a due date on it, but I can't control its availability unless I do like some module release conditions. So the, the date grade setting is really set in Pressbooks, but there is the ability to set a point value. And the way that LTI grade exchange works is a little bit confusing, but basically what happens is you saw in Pressbooks that there was actually numerical points. But what we do when we sum up the value, the LMS tells us, send us the maximum possible points and the actual points received. And it turns it into a ratio or a percentage. So when, the, when Pressbooks gives a number to the LMS, it doesn't say, oh, they scored 10. It says, oh, it scored 10 out of 12 or 5, 6 or 84 point whatever percent or 80, uh, what's 5, 6? Jonathan, is it 86%, something like that? So what would happen would be Canvas would receive a percentage value, the LMS would receive a percentage value, and then it would scale it to whatever their numerical point value is in the LMS. So Pressbooks will always be sending a proportion or a percentage and the LMS will use its point calculation to turn it into a raw number, if that makes sense. Yes. So, for example, if I were to set this to 20, the grade would be scaled to be a percentage, a ratio of 20, rather than 13 out of 15, it would be 16 out of 20, or whatever the ratio ended up turning out to be. If you change how the grade is calculated here in the LMS, again, you'll need to have students resubmit the activity in order for the grade to be updated. So if I change this suddenly from 100 to 20, the grades would still show as, my, I would just be changing the denominator, I wouldn't have changed the numerator. Like you can see here, this, this grade used to be set to be out of 20, and earlier I, later I changed it to 100, and these students are looking like they only scored 12 or 13 because it was initially base 20, and I changed it to base 100 to kind of explore exactly what you were talking about. Great, thank you. The last thing I know we're running a bit short on time. Um, I have an update on the Pressbooks directory. Um, I'm happy to show that, but I also wanted to really make sure we left some time for people on the call to share things that were of interest for others in the group or things that they are working on. I would say let's hold off on the Pressbooks directory. I'll have even more to show you next time. Um, just know that we are working on a directory of a bunch of public Pressbooks books from all over the various networks. And we're really excited to be able to show you a front end. Next month's demo will be mostly focused on that, and we think it'll be pretty exciting for you to see. Um, in the meantime, what do you have that you want to share? Thanks, everybody, for joining us for the May Pressbooks product update. We appreciate all that you're doing for open education. We appreciate you participating in our software community and all the work that you're doing to advance uh, better education for all. Thanks so much. <laughs>